Sup YouTube, IG here again, back from hot holiday again, and here we are with another In Galactic's Opinion, the show where I just talk about newsy type stuff in the Linux and open source world that matters to me. Starting with the first, wait, roll the intro. All right, and starting with the first story of the day, which is Skype 4.0 finally lands on Linux. And it's about time because Skype 4.0 has been uh, in development, or at least we've been sitting at Skype version 2.2, I believe, for the last couple of years. And it's been quite a slack uh, job as far as the uh, Skype team are concerned, but they came out with a press release saying, First off, we'd like to thank our Skype for Linux users for your patience awaiting Skype 4.0 for Linux, codenamed Four Rooms for Improvement, which is now available. With this release, we have finally filled the gap with our other desktop clients and are now making many of the latest Skype features as well as a lot of UI improvements available to our penguin lovers. And so it talks about a few of the new features that you're going to be seeing in the new Skype release, including the new conversations view where you can see all of the chats unified in one single window instead of multiple windows being all over the place. They've got the brand new call view as well that looks much more like the Skype for Mac and Windows. And also the call quality has been improved quite a bit. They are also working on improved video quality and improved better drivers for a lot of the webcams that are out there on the Linux side of things. And of course they've made a few tweaks here and there such as more emoticons, more chat, uh, more chat options, a few language improvements and just overall stability. So well done Skype for finally getting that out there. It's about time because we've been waiting for this for quite some time now. Moving right along. Linux gaming is on its way because uh, apparently Valve have announced that they are going to be doing a port for Linux uh, for their popular Steam client, which is of course the gaming, uh, the gaming server side of things that have been uh, around on the Windows and Mac side of things for some time now. And there's been rumors for years about a, a Linux client for the Steam service coming to Linux, but it's never really come a anything there's been job postings uh, in various years for a Linux uh, for a person with Linux experience but here we are we finally have something concrete that there is going to be Steam coming to Linux which is a fantastic news for everybody who plays games out there and likes to run Linux at the same time one less reason to dual boot in my opinion and of course there are a few games that have landed in the Ubuntu Software Center a few uh, games from EA which really are just uh, bookmarks really for website games but it is good to see that Ubuntu is gaining some sort of traction in the gaming world and it is making developers set up and notice that there is an operating system out there that isn't uh, really being supported very well. Ubuntu does have quite a decent market share now so it's probably about time that uh, developers started looking at it which is fantastic that a big player like EA is uh, considering you know putting their stuff in the Ubuntu software center even though there are any crippled versions of like web bookmarks but still at least the company is opening their eyes towards the option. So with Valve coming out with Steam possibly in the end uh, towards the end of this year there's been no official statement as to the timing of this but they do have a source engine that's in the works for the Linux side of things and they are working uh, and benchmarking a lot of Linux hardware to see where they can go with it. The brilliant folks over at Pharonix have posted uh, a post about that, so I will dump links down below for you to check them out. So that is very happy news for all of us, and so we move on. It appears that Mandriva is not entirely dead yet. Apparently, in a news release that came out on the 15th of June, uh, the Mandriva development team, at least the government side of things, is uh, still going through all kinds of remodeling and reworking, and they're trying to figure out where they sit. Mandriva Linux 2012 is supposed to be developing, kind of? But at this stage, they're not really sure uh, whether they're going to be able to make it uh, as, as an operating system uh, with, the, with the current model that they have. They are wanting to be focused more on a community version or a community-oriented distribution rather than a company-backed uh, distribution like they have been in the past. Of course, they still are looking for financial supporters and providers. And so it's still a bit up in the air. Now, of course, uh, as I looked at in, my, in one of my last videos, uh, we've got Rosa 2012 and Magia 2, which are both Mandriva-based distributions. Magia going very strongly. It's in DistroWatch's top five at the moment, which is pretty impressive. Uh, so it's going to be kind of tough, I think, for Mandriva to, to see where they're going to be able to go from here. The development team are in meetings and they're trying to decide what exactly they're going to be doing about this uh, distribution that is kind of falling apart. In 2011, there were rumors that a French company, Linagora, was going to be acquiring uh, the Mandriva distribution, but it turned out that they were just rumors. So now they have actually appointed uh, like a project leader and a few uh, and a few project managers for uh, Mandriva Linux 2012 but they're not exactly sure if it's ever going to be released. Uh, interestingly enough the Mandriva development team that has been kind of pieced together has actually actually invited the Magia team in on the development process. Magia declined basically for the same reasons 
that Magia separated from Mandriva in the first place. So despite Magia's big forget you to the Mandriva community, they are, the Mandriva community still are going to be using a lot of Magia's code on their server side operating system. So that's kind of interesting. Personally, I really don't mind if Mandriva Linux goes away now. They've left quite a legacy and they are many operating systems, or at least two good ones, uh, that are going to be more than happy to pick up the pieces and carry on with the uh, with all the stuff that Mandriva is famous for. And I've already covered that, so I'm not going to talk about that anymore. So we move on. And in yet more Ubuntu news, the Ubuntu App Showdown is well on its way. And basically, this is, uh, this is an effort by Canonical to try and encourage uh, quality applications developed specifically for Ubuntu based on their design guidelines. And there are incredible prizes up for grabs. We have the System76 providing uh, uh, laptops for the winners and we also have a Nokia N9 so that's pretty sweet deal in my opinion so if you do have developing skills and have some time to kick around you have about three weeks they do also have a reddit page where you can submit some apps or ideas for apps and then you can then they can track to see uh, which is the more popular and so forth and so on so gold prize is going to be a system 76 gazelle professional laptop with a Nokia N9 silver is going to be a Lima ultra laptop and a Nokia N9 and a bronze prize is going to be you guessed it, a Nokia N9. The Nokia N9, of course, being the phone that has kind of like the Mego operating system on it, so it's all Linux based. The judges are going to be some of the heavyweights in the open source Ubuntu community, including the lead for the canonical design team, Matthew Paul Thomas, John O'Bacon being the Ubuntu community manager, Joey Elijah Sneddon from OMG Ubuntu, Jonathan Thomas, who is the OpenShot, who is the lead developer for OpenShot Video Editor, David Planello, who is like the app developer community liaison for Canonical, and Bhavani Shankar, I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right, but he is the application review board as well. It's open to everybody so if you have got any developing skills in applications whatsoever and you have a cool idea then definitely enter this contest and you could be up for some major grabs. Not only that but your application will then be available for Ubuntu and probably all the other operating systems as well once it gets out there. If you have a cool idea, then go for it. So now we come to the part of the show where I ask you the question of the day, and that is with GIMP 2.8 being updated and Skype 4.0 finally coming updated, is there another major application that hasn't seen an update in quite some time that needs updating? I'm kind of thinking Picasa for Linux and I know that now it's kind of officially a dead product and which is a real shame because I use Picasa the the Google image management software quite a bit on the Windows side of things and it's a real bummer to see it lost on Linux so definitely let me know in the comments below what application you would like to see updated and I shall see you all in the very near future with another distro review and app review hopefully sometime this week peace out ladies and gentlemen